Hello again, this is part three of the sterilization module. So I've already spoken about electron beam and ethylene gas, and in this section I'm going to talk about gamma irradiation. Uh, as I said previously, I won't talk about steam in these series. Uh, so what gamma irradiation is, it's another very valid technique for sterilizing medical devices. It uses radiation to kill microorganisms, so cobalt-60 radiation. Um, it kills the microorganisms by attacking the DNA molecule. And as with the other two, once you attack the DNA molecule, you stop the microorganism um, from being able to reproduce or, or you prevent cellular division or reproduction and therefore this results in death of the organism so it's a very efficient way uh, to kill microorganisms a key characteristic of gamma over the others is the high penetration rate or high penetration capability so it has the ability to, to penetrate um, bulky products and bulky packaging so it enables moderately dense or sealed products to be processed um, and for the treatment of palletized product. Uh, so again, very efficient um, and, and very good for these types of applications. Uh, but as with electron beam, it does have the capability to change um, polymers and um, result in conformational changes of the polymers. So um, ethylene oxide is still the preferred sterilization method for polymers. But we'll have a look at this table which compares all the different methods. So with gamma, as I said, there's no restriction on the types of products that can be. Um, the product design, so the packaging that can be uh, sterilized with ethylene oxide. The products have to have um, sealed cavities, so it's limited in product design steam none and uh, electron beam it has to be a low density product so electron beams don't penetrate as well as gamma um, so with gamma some plastics can discolor and some fibers can degrade which are disadvantages uh, ethylene the big advantage here is most materials are okay and electron beam again plastics can discolor or degrade the product packaging, there's no restriction on gamma, there's no stress on the seals, and non-permeable materials are okay, so which means um, that devices that are in non-permeable packaging will still get sterilized. For ethylene oxide, the packaging materials must be permeable, and the seals must withstand a pressure and a vacuum. And for electron beam, the packaging must be thin. Uh, there's no restriction on permeability, and there's no stress on the seals. So parameters uh, for gamma, time is the main parameter. Um, so the, the, the longer, the more sterilization. Ethylene oxide, as we mentioned, has lots of different operating parameters. So there's the ETO concentration, vacuum, pressure, temperature, relative humidity, and time. Uh, likewise for steam, and time is the only parameter for electron beam. Uh, so reliability. Gamma it has excellent reliability, as does electron beam and steam, and ethylene is, is good. There's often biological indicators, or there has to be biological indicators, um, which are put in each pallet to ensure that the product has been sterilized. Uh, so there is good reliability from ethylene oxide, but not excellent. Um, so how do you test post-sterilization? Um, so there's, as I said, biological indicators for ethylene oxide or dosimetric release for the other two. Uh, there's no quarantine required for gamma and electrons, so they are, they're safer to use for personnel. Uh, so however, for ethylene and steam, there's a quarantine of um, between 3 and 14 days uh, to remove gas. Um, the products have to be aerated to remove residues. And, um, and there are safety concerns there. So there's no treatment required for gamma or electron beam. Um, they all require high capital investment, um, um, but they are all good once the investment is in. Um, they are all good for, keep, for coping with low and high volumes. 
Um, so the main thing to note here in validation is there's complex performance runs for ethylene oxide. Um, the material qualification is very lengthy for gamma and electron beam because you have to ensure that the product itself maintains its integrity after these. So there's a lengthy qualification period. Um, so this table is a very good table to compare and contrast the, the, the three different methods. I didn't focus on STEAM so much, but the, the data is there if you're interested in it. So that completes the section on sterilization methods for medical devices. Thank you.